I wrote Jackrabbit Factor because I had had this major breakthrough in my life, and after attending more than 100 seminars, the lights went on. And I thought, well, good grief, why, they, why didn't they just say it like this? I thought, somebody's got to write that book, you know? But what's funny, and it, it wasn't really funny at the time, is that after writing Jackrabbit Factor and thinking, oh, I've got this all figured out, life's just going to be from now on, you know? Uh, we had a little bit of this, and then it's like life pulled the rug out from under us. And in the middle of it, I was thinking, oh my word, what has just happened? This isn't supposed to happen to the jackrabbit lady, you know? What are people going to think? What's going to happen? What if we run out of money? What if it doesn't work anymore? Are, are these things really true? Are these principles, do they work? How many of you have felt that way? Maybe you had a taste of, you know it works, and then all of a sudden it's like the laws are suspended. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, where'd they go? They were so dependable two weeks ago. I don't know what's going on now. And what I found out was that they are still true. They do still work. Uh, there is opposition in all things. We were thrown into some situations that allowed me to test the principles at a deeper, tougher, more intense, brain-wracking, heart-wrenching scenario. Because there are people that are going through those kinds of things that if I was just talking about jackrabbit factor principles with Legos and paying the electric bill, they weren't going to be able to believe that what we have to offer can really help with the big things too. So we got a few big things to test them to. For about two years, when things were in reversal mode, and I'm thinking, you know, do I pull the books off the shelf? Do I call all the distributors and say, never mind, I think it's not true anymore? I just didn't know what I, I didn't know what to do. And you know, the little voice in the back of my head just kept saying, Leslie, you don't, and you might want to write this down too, because I'm sure that there are people in this room and on the webcast who are going to face this if you haven't already, where maybe you've shared these principles with somebody else, and then it's come back and you've had to be challenged a little bit on them. But you do not make the principles true or false by how well you're living them. You do not make the principles true or false by how well you, me, are living them. I was doing the best I knew how. I was doing the best, you know, what had worked before in, in controlling my thoughts, in seeing a challenge come up and turning it to our benefit. I was doing all the things that we'd been doing that, that created such a breakthrough before, but it just was taking so long to see the next breakthrough, and I began to wonder if it was ever going to come. And what I learned through that period of time is what's in Portal to Genius. That's why I had to write the book. I had to write the sequel to explain, oh, I had only scratched the surface before, and I'm so fired up about what's in that book that you can, you can see these challenges, these, these reversals come, and know with certainty that they are part of that journey to where you're trying to go. It's part of it. It shows up and you can say, thank you, now I know why that you're here and I'm gonna do with you what I'm supposed to do with you and put it behind me because the person I'm gonna be on the other side of it is who I need to be to receive what I'm asking for.